Hello, and welcome to The Trans Agenda, a podcast by Trans Clinique. I'm your host, Nico, and I'm a trans man, and my pronouns are he and they. Every Thursday at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, we'll be right here talking about the trans agenda. In this podcast, we'll delve into the unique challenges and experiences of trans folks, highlighting the voices of those who have lived it themselves. We'll explore issues such as navigating medical and legal systems, finding acceptance within family and community, and combating discrimination and violence. Our guests will share their personal stories and expertise, providing valuable insights and perspectives on this often misunderstood aspect of the human experience. Join us as we strive to educate, inform, and advocate for trans rights and visibility. Hello, and welcome to the Trans Agenda. My name is Nico. I'm Mar. How y'all doing? And we are here to tell you about Mars Trans Agenda. So do you want to share a little bit about yourself, who you are, how you identify? Sure, I would love to. I'm Mar. Um, I identify as trans mask, um, also non-binary. Shout out to my non-binary folks who also are trans. I love that. We exist. Absolutely. Yeah. How is your, you know, just speaking of that, like how has your experience been, like I do think that there's an erasure of non-binary trans mask people. Like, yeah. Speak to that a little bit. Yeah, um, I feel like in, in our society, we're pushed to either be this or that, pick one or the other. But um, my part of my transness is, you know, noticing and uh, kind of like being in the nuance of how fluid gender can be and how like how very trans it is to be kind of somewhere in your own expression. And, you know, and yeah, you don't have to be one thing or the other ever with anything. What I love about being trans is that is the creativity right we get to create we get to self-create so that's beautiful yeah i think it's beautiful too (laughs) how did you know that you were like because you know that this isn't something we're given a script for in society so how did you know that you were trans and kind of find yourself yeah um well i always knew i wanted to cut my tits off so there's that but that came actually before i started to realize that oh wait i think i might be transgender um but i feel like it just kind of came organically figuring out like things I want to change with my body, like getting my tits cut off and then uh, starting to think like, oh, maybe I want to uh, start HRT. Um, actually, when I moved to the Bay, I, I met my first uh, trans mask person that I've ever met before and they, we became good friends. Shout out you, you know who you are. Um, so and that, that kind of like uh, gave me the idea, oh, this can, this can happen. I can do these things, you know. When I was growing up, I didn't think that that was a thing. I thought either you're gay or you're a lesbian, and that's just it. Yeah. Know? Yeah. And there's not a lot of... Yeah, and then you grow up and you find out, oh my God, I can do whatever I want. <laughs> At any time. <laughs> exactly. Yes. I love that. Well, you know, the way that I know you, I mean, we met actually pre-transition, so... Yes. When I putting... My voice is like this. <laughs> I mean, mine too. Yeah, right. <laughs> and we were putting up posters yes. um, around the Bay, you know, doing things that you have to do to make these events work in the Bay. Um, but yes. now, you know, I know you as a DJ, a party promoter. I wonder if you could tell us a little more about, you know, the art that you do and the projects that you're working on. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, I have this project. I go by the name of Dreams when I DJ. I've been working on that project for like 10 years in the Bay, throwing parties and DJing and promoting. And um, that's been a real a real journey, um, and just so much fun creating spaces for my community, and you know letting folks have the space to release and dance and love each other, find each other, and that's been uh, that's been great. That's been great. But um, I'm actually uh, shifting into more of my music and producing, and uh, really leaning into playing the drums and producing music. And um, I have a new project I'm calling Nightmares. So I'm really stoked about that. The kind of duality between dreams and nightmares. And Nightmares is like a dark pereo, sort of like a Jersey Club thing that I'm working on. So I'm really excited to release that to the world. That's really cool. When can we yeah. expect that? Um, <laughs> that's the thing. Um, you'll When you least expect it. Okay, I love that. I love that answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, as a musician, like, what inspires you about music? I think that connection, especially for trans people, is so special. Like, yeah. where did you find that in yourself? Um, I feel like uh, I just have this ear when I hear something that speaks to my soul, and I feel it in my body, and I'm like, oh, this song is amazing. I just want to, 
share it with people. And um, I guess it's just that little thing that I feel inside. Um, yeah, I, there's no yeah. other real way to say that. No, yeah. I feel that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And about your events, you know, do you feel somewhat similar? Or is that kind of a different relationship that you have with this? Yeah, yeah. Um, hmm. Yeah, I kind of want to think about this one. Because it, it's tough because events is a way that uh, we make money as event producers. So um, I feel like with any hobby you kind of monetize, it becomes like there's this, oh, I need to make I need to make some money so I can pay my rent. And also um, I want to create this beautiful artistic like um, moment where everyone comes together and loves on each other. So it's a uh, it's kind of a dance between that. Um, yeah, because I'm a working artist. Uh, I DJ produce and. Yeah, so I'm always, uh, I'm always, I'm living like the gig life mm-hmm. right now, at least. Yeah. yeah, and that's a hard you took. You know, it's hard when you monetize your passions yes. to keep your passion because now there's this yes. external thing, money, and we live in a capitalism. Everybody needs that, yes. unfortunately. Um, so it kind of ma- it changes your relationship with the passion. Like, how have you been able to navigate that and maintain being an artist even? Yeah. With that? That's a great question. Um, well, I guess the way I've been able to do it is kind of diver- diversifying my income um, by yeah by using my my uh, skills in audio. I I, uh, I work in uh, being an audio technician at other places and stuff. So kind of like bringing in other streams of income so you can uh, focus on your art separately, like you know whatever it may be. I feel like that's a way. Right, like kind of related, but not directly what you're doing that way. Right. It doesn't mess with your your passion, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, but there's only so much time in the day and, and uh, so much energy that you have. Yeah. So, you know, it, it it's is all about what the it balance. is. <laughs> yeah, 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 it definitely is, especially out here in the Bay Area, but, you know, we got to yeah. do what we can. Well, and I know you have a business partner, which is also your partner yes my baby girl Um, and a lot of us who are trans like we do have trouble finding relationships that are like fulfilling and that really support you being the best you i look at you two and i'm like oh my god i love this This is mom and dad for real um so i wonder like could you tell us a little bit about your perspective as a trans person in love and in a long-term relationship wow wow i love that um (laughs) You know, it's just any, just like with any other relationship. Um, well, Olivia and I have grown a lot with each other. You know, we've been together for almost seven years, and you know, just like with any other relationship, you you grow, and you guys may not be the same people you were when you met each other. And yeah, I was pre uh, transition, I guess you could say, when I got together with her, and you know, you just kind of live and grow together, and uh, if you. Uh, if it's meant to be, y'all, y'all will just, you know, work it out. You can work out anything with anybody. And yeah, uh, with her, it's, it's just special. You know, we just we just found each other and are never going to let go of each other. So it's just, it's hella special. <laughs> I mean, you, you can find that and you will find that if that's what you want. Put your energy towards it and just put yourself out there and you'll find, you know, the one who completes you, bruh. I swear. <laughs> yeah. Um, I love that. Words from, oh my God. Yeah. That's my heart. You got this. <laughs> yeah. If you could talk to your younger self, if you could tell yourself, you know, whatever you needed to hear, what would that be? Oh, wow. That's so deep. Um, wow. Um, I guess uh, I would say you're, you're not going to be alone forever, baby. You got this. Oh my God. Yeah. This is a really emotional yeah. like, interview, I feel like. It's so, I mean, it's deep because I for a long time I thought I was going to be alone forever. I just thought that I was just so different, you know. Um, but, and yeah, I kind of like internalized that, you feel me? Yeah. So. How did you come to a point where you were able to not feel that way? A, a lot of that was um, just learning more about myself and, and coming into myself as a trans person. And, um just building that relationship with myself Mm -hmm. yeah do you have any specific ways that you did that or stories that um might be fun to hear specific ways uh one one way i I did it was uh it sounds kind of cheesy but like building community and like building friendships especially with uh other artists and djs um and just kind of hearing other people's stories and 
ways that they've, you know, kind of like uh, navigated their transness and queerness and yeah, and just getting inspired by others and like, yeah, uh, putting more people around me who are like me Um, because I didn't grow up around a lot of queer or trans people Mm -hmm. like at all. So yeah, yeah, just uh, being around more people really helped me um, kind of like think about my own shit, you know. Yeah, it does help because you are who you surround yourself with. So if you're with a bunch of people who are like, I'm trans and I love it. Yeah, it's pretty hard to be down. I know. Yourself, I know. So. And I do feel so blessed to yeah. be out here in the Bay Area community with so many amazing my trans brothers and my <laughs> trans non-binary <laughs> folks and my trans sisters. Like, I love all y'all. Like, y'all, you may not know it, but y'all mean the world to me. For yeah. real. I love that. <laughs> 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 Bro. Crying on camera. Um, where do you see yourself in like five, ten years? Like, where are you going? Out of here. Mm-hmm. No shade. No, for real though. Um, I, I'm just, I can't live in the Bay Area anymore. It's too expensive. We all know that. But I feel like I'm just ready for a change. Um, I want to own property. Part of me wants to go live on a farm in, in Montana. <laughs> Part of me wants to go live on a farm in Wyoming. But um, I do want to go live in Mexico and have my own place, grow some food, be with my bae and our children, and just be able to relax and not be so hustle bustle and really just enjoy my life instead of just constantly hustling and still be artistic and still, still DJ and maybe even still throw events. But um, that's what I want to do. Yeah. yeah. That's where I want to be in five, le- hopefully less than five years. No shade. It's hard. I mean, you know, the survival mindset out here is yeah. real, you know, rent. It's crushing. Living costs. It's so expensive. Yeah. But luckily we have the internet. Yes. Uh, so, only fans. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you could be, uh, my point was, you could be anywhere and yes. still make art and share it with people and find community um, yeah. and live on your farm. You know yeah. What I mean? <laughs> yeah. I'm just. That sounds like a dream. I, it really is a dream. And yeah, I think uh, a lot of my uh, peers are ready for that life too. To like you know grow our own food like shoot ducks out of the sky and cook them <laughs> or maybe that's just me on that one <laughs> and yeah yeah no i love it yeah sorry yeah fix me <laughs> well ooh. so do you have any workout tips for the bros <laughs> shit <laughs> get up with olivia and work out with olivia because yeah. i barely get up and do it myself no, a great workout tip is just drink more water. You'll be good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's true. Water is life. It's literally essential. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on the Trans Agenda. This yes. was such a, like, I, I almost actually cried, like, almost three times. <laughs> that's what you're going to get with me, babe. Uh, yeah. We're going to laugh. We're going to cry. We're going to fucking. And that's what we We, we might need. fight. At yeah, the end. yeah. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who knows? Um, what is your Trans Agenda? I'm glad you asked because I have so many notes about this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the trans agenda, live, laugh, and gag, okay? Trans agenda, okay, look, some of us are superstars, yes, but a lot of us are just average people and we're just hotter than the average person. That's it. Uh, the trans agenda, look, S- Star Amorasu said it all. You know, uh, some, some trans people are amazing and some of us need to shut the fuck up. And <laughs> fucking, I, when, she saw, when she said that, I fucking felt that. In some days I'm trans person A, some days I'm trans person B, you know. Um, but no, for real, um, shit, I, I don't feel like I have a legit agenda like that pertains to my transness. I'm just like a regular human, you know what I mean? We all just want to like love and be loved and wake up and have a good fucking day and maybe even a good fucking life. I just want to be happy and, you know, um, that's really that's really all I got to say that pertains to my necessarily agenda yeah um i want to wake up and and drink coffee and um and have a good day and not be hated on and and not um not need any for anything or you know oh yeah that's beautiful (laughs) thanks (laughs) and so real like not all of i don't know i just want to live yeah 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 Yeah. that that would be nice huh that would be nice yeah Yeah. (laughs) on the farm though we're ready for the farm on the farm uh farmville i'm ready for it baby yeah I think, okay, maybe that, okay, I think I got it now. The, the trans agenda, or maybe this also is a queer agenda, but a lot of us want to go live on a farm and take a st- couple steps back from society and be self-sustainable. So, yeah, I think that's my eco-friendly agenda note for, for y'all today. 
you know, let's uh, let's all move toward uh, community equity and and all throwing down on a gigantic farm and living on it and just being happy and shit. Yeah. Well, I'm ready. Like, if you want to go, we can. I'm, I'm ready to get in here. Are you ready? Because I'm fucking ready. Let's okay, go. Let's go. Okay. Bye, y'all. See y'all <sighs> later. Peace. It's been nice. Trans individuals face unique challenges every day. From accessing healthcare to navigating legal systems, it is crucial that we work towards creating a society that is inclusive and supportive of people of all gender identities. This means advocating for policies and practices that prioritize the health and well being of trans individuals, as well as challenging discriminatory attitudes and behaviors where they exist. By coming together to support and uplift trans voices, we can create a brighter and more equitable future for everyone. Thank you for listening and let us continue to work towards a world where trans individuals can thrive. Follow us on all social media platforms at TransClinique and don't forget to like this video and hit the subscribe button.